and a quick note before we get into the meat and potatoes of the video. You're going to want to tear this out of the mask first. There's this mesh inside. I waited until after I already had it sanded and bonded and painted and I had to be really careful and it took a really long time to get this out. This piece is hot glued in. But yeah, if you're going to replace this with a visor like I did here, you're going to want to tear this out first. Alright, so I just got this First Order Stormtrooper Deluxe Helmet that is manufactured by Rubies. And it's a two-piece helmet. So the front and back attach here, and it has a seam, as you can see. And I'm going to take and glue this together. I'm going to run some 5mm EVA foam along the inside here, and glue that onto this, give it a little support. And then I'm going to use some Bondo to fill in this crack all along here, sand it, and paint it. But I will say this helmet fits rather well. I also bought the Kylo Ren two-piece, and originally I was going to film that, modify it, put a voice changer in it, but it's so big that I look like Dark Helmet from Spaceballs whenever I put it on. So that's not going to happen. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this mesh and run a piece of clear plastic, probably with some car window tint over it to give it a nice dark look and color. Right, I took a pair of scissors and I just cut a about a half inch wide strip of, well, maybe three quarter of an inch wide strip of EVA foam. It's five millimeter EVA craft foam. And I'm gonna use contact cement. I'm gonna apply this pretty liberally to one side of the foam here. Okay. And once I get all that brushed on there, I'm also going to run the contact cement around the inside of the helmet here where the seam is. I'm going to let those both sit for about 15-20 minutes and I'm going to go ahead and glue it together. Okay, I have my strip glued in here. And as you can see, there's a lot of bumps and ridges. And this is a part of the reason why I used the contact cement. You don't really have any work time with the contact cement, but it does adhere really well. And while I was doing all that, I have heated up my hot glue gun. I'm going to go ahead and run a bead along each side of the strip that I glued in here just to make sure it stays in place. All right, now that I've got all this glued together and put a bead of hot glue around it to make sure that that stays in place, I've noticed that there is a little bit of an upslope where these two meet, and there's also little bit of burrs and stuff on it from whenever they cleaned off the excess from whenever they did the injection mold. So I'm going to use some 600 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to start slowly smoothing that out before I apply the Bondo. Alright, I sanded this all down smooth and now I'm going to start applying the Bondo. And I didn't get the normal Bondo, I just got this glazing and spot putty because this is already mixed in this, you don't need to do the two-part Bondo with the hardener. And part of the reason I did that is this is a really tiny crack. And I'm going to be pretty meticulous about applying it. So I'm going to use this small tool here. It just has a little flat plastic spatula end on it here. And I'm going to apply it real gradually and real slowly. And if I do that with normal Bondo, it's going to harden really quickly and I'm just gonna have to constantly stop and mix and remix this so I got this stuff instead I'm gonna try this out and see how it works okay you can see here I'm just putting on a very small amount and being very careful to work it inside this crack and as I go along I'm wiping this applicator tip off with a paper towel because this stuff does dry quick and you're gonna get all gunked up and you're gonna have a real hard time Let's apply a little bit here and then I'm going from the bottom on one side and working all the way around and I start just kind of spreading it out and pushing it in the crack as best as I can and then from there just kind of smooth it out scrape off the excess the smoother and more even that you apply this, 
the less sanding and work like that you're going to have to do later. So keep that in mind anytime you use this stuff. Okay, I've applied the Bondo all the way around the Stormtrooper helmet here. And it says at least 25 to 30 minutes to dry, but I'm going to give it about eh, an hour or so. And I've cleaned this off continuously as I used it because this stuff will bond to anything. And once this is done, I'm going to go back with the same 600 grit sandpaper and I'm going to sand all this smooth. And once I sand it smooth, I'm going to do a sort of a touch inspection and just to make sure that you don't feel the seam. If I do, I'm going to have to reapply this all over again, let it dry and re-sand it. But I'd rather have it come out looking clean, otherwise what's the point of even filling the crack to begin with? I could just paint it. But yeah, I'll let this dry and then come back, check on it and start sanding. Alright, so I've let this dry for a couple hours and I'm going to go ahead and start sanding. And I'm going to use the same 600 grit sandpaper that I was using before. Now, anytime you use Bondo and you're going to sand it, this stuff's really dangerous. It's bad for you to breathe in the dust from it. So, always make sure that you wear goggles and some gloves and a respirator. And, you know, even your clothing or anything, immediately take it off, wash it whenever you're done. Because this stuff is really, really harmful. Okay? Right now that I have all my safety equipment on, I'm going to start very lightly sanding down the Bondo. I'm going to go all the way across from the top to the sides. Once I get done, I'm going to feel and make sure that this is nice and smooth like I want it before I move on to the painting. Okay, so I finished sanding the whole thing, but I did go through and add a little more Bondo down here. I'm going to re-sand this. I'm doing this for two reasons. One, there is too much of a ridge, and two, I applied a little bit too much pressure when I was sanding, and it cracked on both sides of it. So I went through and applied a little bit more Bondo, and I went and sanded everything except for the black areas. I'm going to mask those off. I'm going to repaint them with uh, Model Masters Black by hand, but all the white I'm going to spray paint with some Rust-Oleum White Primer. And in order to get the primer to stick a little better to this plastic, I gave it a light sand over the whole entirety of the helmet. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry, come back, sand it, and then move on to masking and paint. All right, now that it's all sanded up, I'm going to take a moist paper towel, and I'm just going to wipe off all of the excess dust. A, I don't want it on it when I paint it, but I also don't want it on my hands whenever I'm masking all the areas off here. Right, I've taken masking tape and covered the areas I don't want painted. This other stuff I don't care about. I'm going to go ahead and hand paint all those details. First, I'm going to apply some flat paint and primer. Some of this Val Spar High Gloss Lacquer. And I'm applying this immediately after painting it white. If I don't apply it immediately, I gotta usually wait about 48 hours for it to cure. All right, and here it is after I've applied both the white and the lacquer. All right, so now that it's had 48 hours dry, it's not quite as glossy as I want. So I'm gonna add one more coat of high gloss lacquer. I don't want it too shiny, but the way it is just looks way too plain. I'm 
the nice thing about this lacquer is some of the other clear coats I seem to have to put a decent amount on. This lacquer, a couple thin coats, gives you a nice shine and a nice finish. And it does dry relatively quick to the touch. Look on the can, it says 10 minutes, but I usually give it about half hour, hour before I try to move it, because if you really give a good firm hold on it, it is going to leave fingerprints. Right, I've masked this area here off because I'm going to use a high gloss black lacquer. I'm going to spray paint this area to save myself some time. The rest of this isn't too bad. I'm just going to touch it up with some Model Masters black. But this, yeah, I'm going to spray paint this. But before I do that, I'm going to use a plastic bag that I'm going to tape around this masking to cover the whole mask just to make sure I don't get black paint on anything else. Alright, I got the bag taped to my masking job. Take this high gloss black lacquer from Valspar. all around the entirety of it with some light overlapping strokes and that's it I'll let this dry for about four or five hours. I'm going to go ahead and peel the masking off, see how it looks. All right, I've taken off the masking. All around here and next, for any places where there's a little bit of the paint coming out, I'm going to touch it up with just some regular old white acrylic craft paint. And to finish off the black here and do all this stuff in, and this piece, I'm going to use some Model Masters Black. One of the nice things about this white acrylic craft paint is that it does dry relatively quick. However, the Model Masters takes at least 48 hours to cure. Alright, now that the white is done, move on and do the black here. And I'm using Model Masters. And this stuff is nice because it does coat very well. Much better than any acrylic craft paint. However, the drawback of it is it takes about 48 hours at least to cure. I usually end up giving it 72 or more. I usually wait two, three days. And the reason why I do this is because it is just not any good if you do it too soon. I've, I've waited you know 48 hours and done either a second heavy coat or uh, clear coated it and it wrinkled so we always want to give it plenty of time but the nice thing about it is it does coat very well it goes on rather thick and it looks really nice it has a nice glossy finish and the drawback of this is you're going to need a solvent of some sort uh, to clean the brushes. You can't just use water like with the craft paint. You'll notice, as I said at the beginning of the video, you're going to want to do this first. And I tore out the visor, which is just EVA foam with some mesh on it. And I made a pattern out of paper. And I cut out my window tint. 
And now I'm going to place that inside here, which I've applied some spray adhesive to. And you're going to notice that I glued this so it has a curve to it, so it doesn't wrinkle a whole lot whenever I put it in the mask itself. And I'm also going to spray some uh, 3M spray adhesive on this and apply it to the inside. And here it is with both pieces glued together. Next, I'm going to put some contact cement on here and on the inside of the Stormtrooper mask. I'm going to go ahead and attach this in. All right, and I've taken the contact cement and I went ahead and glued the pieces in. I didn't put any glue on the center of the foam, just on the edges. But yeah, it's in there, and now it doesn't have that mesh. Uh, the window tint, like I said at the beginning, is pretty dark, but I think it works out. And overall, this is a much better <laughs> looking piece than what I started out with. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with it overall. And my girlfriend seems to like it. It's going to go for her, her costume. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope this was helpful. And as always, thanks for watching.